All right. I can get a good amount of questions regarding Bayonetta on how she functions as a character and how to face as a threatening opponent. And my ideal answer would be something like, please get good in SDI correctly. But I guess having a deeper look and explanation on such a niche and unorthodox figure in a Smash Bros. franchise is worth doing. As a complete beginner, or if you're looking at Bayonetta as a possible choice for your personal roster, Bayonetta can be a very intimidating character to start with and to understand on your own, but it's very rewarding once you understand the stylish way from execution and oppressive tools. So that's why I'm making this video today and share everything that I know, learned, and can think of about Bayonetta as my favorite character of all time. My name is Secretaire, and this is The Essentials of Bayonetta. It is, it is. Hello guys, welcome to the guide. Uh, my name is Secretaire, I am a French Veneta player, and if you're watching this, thank you so much, because it's a, patch, it's a, it's a passion project before anything else. Uh, and yeah, I'm super excited to record this today. I am ready. Uh, I have my laptop over here with my notes. So if you see me like doing that a lot, it's normal. It's gonna be okay. Uh, so, I'm just gonna introduce the guide really quickly before we go like right into it. So, <clears throat> uh, it's a passion project, but also I'm making this guide because when I started Smash and when I started to play Bayo, uh, there were, I mean, there was like a lack of resource and reliable resource. Uh, resources when I started the game and like understanding how the characters were supposed to be played like especially in neutral and like the combos and stuff because there are some videos out there that are just like oh yeah let's talk about like combos in neutral and it's just like they talk about that within I'm like okay sure why not so uh, this go this guide goes straight to the point of what I'm talking about. If I'm talking about neutral, I'm going to be talking about neutral. If I'm talking about uh, advantage, I'm going to be talking about advantage. Like, it's a very lengthy guide, but it goes, it goes straight to the point of what I'm trying to say, right? So, uh, the video is not going to be divided in, in episodes, I guess. It's going to be, you're going to have like different sections. Actually, we have 10 sections to talk about today. And I'm gonna explain them right now. So first and f like first, we have Bayonetta as a character and her pros and cons. So I'm just gonna introduce Bayonetta as a character, what she's about, her pros and cons, that easy. Second, I'm gonna talk about my controls on my controller and the reasons why behind it. Uh, third is gonna be the move set. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna go over all of the moves and variations and all of that Bayonetta that everybody either love or hate. Um, <laughs> uh, fourth, we're gonna have the combos. Uh, I'm not gonna go over like really complicated stuff. I'm gonna go over like some of the bread and butters, the ones that I do a lot in matches, the ones that you need to learn, the basics of them, and then the rest is gonna be is gonna come with experience and time. Uh, then we have uh, DI and SDI, how to adapt, how to read it, and how to adapt. Um, so basically, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go over all of your moves. Say this is how you're supposed to SDI it out. This is how, this is how you're supposed to TI or SDI, and then how you're supposed to like respond to it and how you can adapt. Then it's gonna be neutral. Uh, defensive and offensive styles of neutral uh, and explain I'm gonna present uh, the different styles and like how to play defensive with Bayo how to play aggressive with Bayo what's more popular in the current meta right now and what you're supposed to do with each style basically then we have advantage and when I'm talking about advantage I'm not gonna talk about combo game because we've seen that before so I'm gonna talk about like uh, juggle, counter pressure, ledge trap, edge guard, and ledge guard. Basically, um, I will go. I will talk about that. That what the first. All that goodness about like what Bayo is about, especially with advantage, is pretty cool. Oh. 
Then we have uh, Disadvantage. We have uh, Show Pressure, and then the most common counterplay that you will encounter in Bracket. Uh, with my experience, what I've seen, what I've experienced, and how you can beat it, basically. So, without further ado, let's just jump right into it. So, um, first thing first is gonna be Bayo being in his introduction and her pros and cons before we jump right into the settings. Um, so basically Bayo is a bit and punish, pressure and mix up heavy kind of character. Um, and I also would say that she's a very neutral base character. Um, even though like her neutral is quite bad. Uh, and hard as well. Uh, in my opinion. Uh, she requires a lot of like micro adaptations and the player needs to keep thinking in a creative mindset to be effective with her, especially when it comes to mix ups and counterplay and like what kind of what kind of counterplay the opponent is using against her. So you can like adapt efficiently and you know keep surprising the opponent and being super effective with your combos and advantage and all of the uh, and all of the above right basically uh she she's that kind of that kind of uh, that kind of character sorry that requires a lot of solid fundamentals to play with her because playing with only bayo stuff is gonna make you go f not that far but that can help against people that really don't know how to play how to play against Bayo. And yeah, fundies to make her work properly is going to be a very core element of how to play Bayo, basically, or at least to make her really good. Plus the technicality of the character. So, the pros. Uh, she has one of the best combo game of Ultimate. She has one of the best recovery in Ultimate. She has a very stylish gameplay, she's excellent at edge guarding, and she has pretty much an answer for everything. Uh, especially when it comes to matchups and stuff. The cons, she has weak uh, roll kill power. She has poor neutral, at least is very hard. Uh, she has lackluster frame data. Uh, she is the type of character that is high maintenance and high effort. And she's also extremely light, she is I think top 13 lightest character in the game. Like, if you want a, refer a reference point, Isabelle is heavier than her. That's pretty cool, right? Um, <laughs> so that's basically like how I would, when people ask me what Bayo is about, this is how I basically introduce the character. And she is a lot of fun. I really love her. She's the only reason why, she's the reason why I play Smash, like basically. So, now controls. Uh, I play on the GameCube controller. I first used to play on Pro Controller, which I was not a fan of. And then I switched to GameCube controller because I saw a lot of people playing with that. It was like, oh, there's a reason behind that. And then I just prefer that. It's lighter, the layout is perfect. It's just, I love it. I just prefer it. So I'm going to go over the first settings over here. <clears throat> uh, Rumble. I turn it off. Uh, it's just a preference thing. Most of most of these are preference thing. Um, there are mainly preferences, but for Rumble, I turn it off. I know that some Bayo, uh, some Bayonets like to have Rumble on because it kind of gives them a indicator of like for some combos, like how many hits that they they're, they're getting with like maybe which twist or what or, or the moves, and I can kind of give them an indication of what kind of TI or SDI the opponent is doing while being comboed. But I really don't like it because it kind of gives me like a sensory overload when I have Rumble on, so I turn it off. Uh, Smash Attack with B and A, I turn it off. Because sometimes you can fat finger it, and you're just like, oh yeah, that was not what I was uh, I intended to do, so I just turn it off. Uh, tap jump. 
you should not play with that jump with as as Bayo. Like it's a big no-no to me. I know some Bayos, not personally, but I've known Bayos uh, that uh, play with tap jump for the jump cancel, which is a the core mechanic of this uh, of Bayonetta, which I will explain and introduce later on. Uh, but beyond that, for some combos, it's really bad to have tap jump because you want to keep being able to add drift without jumping and you still want to have full control over your drift and your direction while you're comboing sometimes because of how people DI or STI sometimes. So you should not play with that jump. And if, if you're starting to play with that jump, remove, remove that. It's going to be quite difficult because you need to have, you need to be, you need to create another habit of jumping with Y and X or any other jump button you're using. But please remove tap jump. I'm banging you, like for real. <clears throat> Stick sens sensitivity. Uh, I leave it on high. Um, okay, so stick sensitivity is a preference thing. But basically, the more sensitive your stick is going to be, Basically on high, you will have if you do forward plus A, you will have a higher chance to input a smash attack rather than F tilt. It's simple as that. But also, I think it's also really good for like everything that is like dash dance related or anything that comes with like raw inputs. Maybe it's just like psychologically that works, or it just it's everything is all up in my head. But I prefer a high. I just like that. So I think the norm is going to be playing on high, but you can leave it on normal and low. It doesn't really change anything. So it's up to you. Okay, now the real interesting things. The taunts, you keep them because taunting as Bayonetta is important and you should do it. Like, just do it. It's really cool. The Cystic. Uh, Cystic, um, put it, I keep it on tilt attack, I don't use the smash attack tilt. The Cystic on smash, I don't use it. Because using tilt attacks in neutral is going to be really important because of how Bayo's neutral is. And also some combos requires you to just like keep on drifting and then you have to fast fall and then you have to do a down tilt or an up tilt and then you kind of want to keep your drift full in sometimes and without having to go up in A without the risk of inputting an up smash or having less drip that you're supposed to be I mean you're supposed to have sorry so cystic is really important to have on tilt it's super important uh, uh, A attack B special it's standard thing some people like to reverse it it's just like I don't know like if you're playing with anything else than that like you're fucking weird i don't know okay i have i keep jump on y which is the standard thing but i've shield on x the reason why i've shield on x and not another jump button besides i have c i have jump on c which on z which i will explain later on but basically when you're mashing you can mash with like your analog stick where you, you can sort do circles with it but you can also mash by doing that. But one thing that it needs to be told and explained is that the, when you do this, the game is is basically understanding that you're mashing not four different inputs basically you're just mashing you're just mashing four different buttons but nor but not four different inputs so basically if i have a attack b special y jump and then x jump it doesn't matter how good i am at mashing basically the game would quite would understand that i'm mashing attack special jump and another jump but the, the thing is that since i have two buttons with the same input instead of having four inputs being mashed out, I'm gonna have three inputs being mashed out. So that's why I have X on shield. Reason I don't have grab instead is because it is less uh, committal to with 
to miss and put a shield on a grab because whiffing a grab and smash an ultimate is super punishable and you can die for it or taking a huge punish just f like flicking your shield sometimes by mistake is going to be less punishable than whiffing a grab that's the main reason uh, I still match with the analog stick but sometimes I, I do both so there's that uh, shorter, bi shorter buttons. I have shield on L and grab on R. You can swap them out. It's just the way you prefer. Although, having a jump on the shoulder button is going to be essential to play Bayonetta. I know that Lima doesn't have that and he does like Y and B at the same time because he plays on a, um, in a crow thing with his hand. Like basically he plays like that instead of being like that. Which is like weird but also like who cares but if you want to play Bayo you need a short button with a jump on it the reason why I don't have all L or R with jump on it and said instead is because basically L and R are analog inputs where the Z button is a digital one and digital digital inputs are going to be faster for the game to register than an analog one and also the feeling of l and r is going to be a lot better i mean the feeling of l and r feels too loose and i feel like it's almost like i have to press really strong really like really strong on like all my shown buttons to have the inputs coming out where z sometimes is just like a flick it's just that and also if you play other characters like for peach i love to have like to do flood cancels up here like that so i do and i move like that uh it's pretty good love it and yeah so z is going to be pretty good for jump cancels because it's going to be the, the inputs tighter and better and have less risks of miss inputs and failing Especially when you're learning and then doing it in sets. So yeah, so that's pretty much it for my controls. So now we're gonna move over the move set. <laughs> 